imagine that we're now representing a petri net to represent a, a, a manufacturing line. Okay, so a basic production facility. So we've got a loading dock. And when, when parts come into the loading dock, they go into a staging area, and then they go out to a workstation where they're assembled. Once they uh, are assembled, they're ready for an inventory. The final inventory again goes out to a staging area, and you can go back out to the loading dock. Um, because this is, you can imagine a kit of carts, parts coming into the loading dock and then becoming a finished product. Um, and, uh, and so here are some examples then of the transitions are represented by the operations of the, um, this production facility. So the, the, uh, when, when a token appears in the loading dock, um, that means the transition that represents unload the truck, that now is enabled, it's ready to fire. So in other words, you can, it's ready to have the truck unloaded. And then the inventory is going to end up in the staging area. Now that's going to enable a um, that's going to enable this operation, which is transport. In other words, there's a conveyor that goes from the staging area into the workstation. Okay, so now this is ready to operate. Um, and so now the kit of parts appears at the workstation. Once there's a kit there then this can be assembled, and whether it's human assembly or robotic assembly or whatever, um, that's the, this, is, this now represents the assembly operation. Parts are there, we can do an assembly, and now you have a finished part ready for inventory. Again, that's going to have to get, that triggers a potential transition with this operation of transport. Now this is the conveyor going out um, to a staging area. To the staging area again and then when it's there and of course there's a truck available um, we can actually load the truck and goes out to the from and leaves the loading dock okay um, so all these things um, small there we go um, all these things then um, come together. Well, okay, so this is the synchronization. You can't unload the truck until a truck appears in the loading dock. Um, now, there might be contention. Imagine this conveyor. Now, this is a single conveyor. It's reversed to either go in or out. But that's important that, wait a minute, if the, if the conveyor is loading parts out. In other words, it's going out toward the loading dock, but then a, a truck appears to unload, right? Well, there's a potential contention. And so we can use what's called an escort token to eliminate things like that. This is protecting a resource, basically. And, and here's how you do it. Um, we're gonna preload this loop. We wanna protect the conveyor. The conveyor can only go one direction at a time. And so we're going to pre-mark. So the initial marking of this Petri net is there's a position in the escort location which indicates that the conveyor is ready to be used. Um, from in, from, I'm sorry, from the low, uh, staging area into the workstation. Um, okay, and uh, that... is, and so that motion in, that's what has to be protected. So imagine the same situation. There are no, to no tokens anywhere, so there's no work to be done immediately. And then suddenly a truck shows up at the dock. Okay, so a token gets produced right here. Now that means this can fire. Again, the token gets produced and uh, somebody unloads the truck and, um, Somebody unloads the truck, and um, so now the raw materials are in the staging area. Now, this has two inputs, and there are tokens in both. So this is ready to fire. In other words, the conveyor going into the workstation is ready to go. Okay, 
that has a token, that has a token. So those tokens get consumed and it produces a token here. Now, the whip has um, moved, meaning the work in process, the, uh, the parts, the kit of parts is going to get is uh, at the workstation. Think about this for a minute. We've consumed this token and if a new, if something else shows up on the loading dock, another kit of parts, then that can move into the staging area, but hold on, this won't be able to fire. The, that in this case, the equipment will be, or the, the kit of parts is gonna be trapped in the staging area because the conveyor is not ready to fire, um, because this will be empty. Now, what happens is the once it's done or when it appears in the workstation now it's ready to be assembled so it can be assembled that will consume a token there produce it here um, there's still the token is up here but then when it's now finished assembling and it's in finished inventory well now it can be moved back out to the staging area the input token, there's an input token here, um, so it's ready to fire. There are no other inputs. These are both outputs. And so the token representing the, in, the, uh, um, token representing the inventory um, is going to, um, the finished inventory, is going to say, okay, that can fire. You're going to produce a token for here in the staging area and produce a token up here. This is again the escort token. Now, and that happens while the, while the conveyor moves stuff out, back to the loading dock. Um, and these are my notifications are going crazy here. Um, and so that is what is protecting, the con protecting this conveyor to keep, um, the inventory comes in, will only move one then at a time, and you keep that conveyor um, blocked so it can go back out again. Now the inventory is out to the staging area, and the same conveyor is ready to go again for because this is reset now. Okay? Um, and then again, it can go on out to the loading dock. Now, um, what if we wanted to um, protect only the conveyor and that's what and not the entire workstation and that's what this inhibitor um, node can do so this is a similar situation but all we want to do is prevent using the conveyor um, at the same time we can't go both ways you know one or unidirectional conveyor just can't go both ways at the same time so by putting this inhibitor what we're saying is hold off on this conveyor for transaction um, and uh, or op op I'm sorry operation associated with the transition right so uh, a truck comes in boom truck appears here we're going to unload the truck this is not inhibited so this is empty there's no mark here so this is not inhibited which means as soon as the material appears in the staging area, well, then we can put it on the conveyor and move it into the workstation. So it'll come in. Um, then when it's in the workstation, we can go ahead and assemble it. When it assembles, it goes through to the finished inventory. And then um, now there's a token here that inhibits that transition. But it doesn't change the... A and it doesn't. Um, I'm sorry. The uh, um, when this when the inventory comes here to finished inventory. Now it's going to prevent something from coming in here. Why? Because we want to use that conveyor to go out, not to come in. So we want to inhibit people from putting it on the conveyor and and making the conveyor go in. So that inhibits that and then when it fires you're going to clear that um, and so the conveyor could be used to go out to the staging area now that's going to free up um, that it's going to be able to go out to the staging area 
when this is empty, that's going to free up. This is no longer inhibited. So if there is another load coming in, now, as soon as that inhibitor is be removed from here, now this can fire and come in. All right? Um, and so bottom line is, whenever there's a node here getting ready to use the conveyor to go out, inhibit the use of the conveyor coming in. Now, what about finite time transitions? Um, and what we're going to do there is, or one of the approaches we can do, is add a done indicator that produces a token. Okay? Um, now, in the, with, the, with the finite transition, if something appears in the loading dock and you want to start unloading, uh, but you haven't finished unloading, so you're, you're starting unloading, but you're in this extended state that takes time to transition, essentially. It takes time for the operation. So you're here, and then perhaps um, you press a done button when, and, and an example is that I gave was the um, push button. Um, so when you're ready, you push a button. Now this has a token, this has a token, this will be ready to fire, and it goes out to the, now that you've finished unloading, and it goes out to the staging area. All right? So that is the work we have on Petri nets. There'll be a problem in your homework about this. Um, but the fundamental question here, uh, or, or this is, the fundamental work here is about the Petri net syntax and making sure you understand the use of the circular, uh, the circles as well as the rectangles, and how you can throw in things like escort tokens and inhibitor nodes, um, which are very important. All right, thanks for your attention.